Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for, for coming. I've got 20 minutes to give you an update on Wave Garden. I'll provide you with an update on all of our projects and take you through, uh, through some of the new innovations that we have going at Wave Garden. I'm the head of development at Wave Garden, so I'm responsible for all of our projects through the development phase, from sort of first contact through to the point where they're ready to start construction. And at Wave Garden, we've delivered and built up a team that helps all of our partners during that development phase, from the business planning to design to engineering to cost estimations, feasibility, et cetera, and so on. And what I'm going to do is the usual promo video, but it's a new one, and uh, it'll play for a couple of minutes, and hope you enjoy it. With nine Wave Garden Co. facilities successfully operating across four continents, more than 10 in construction, and over 50 projects financially committed, we are the clear leader in the surf park sector. Facilities powered by our technology have collectively received over 2 million visitors and created more than 35 million waves. And with a leveraged IRR exceeding 20%, each Wave Garden Cove has proven to be very profitable, and several of our partners are investing in new Wave Garden surfing lagoons in other locations, repeating the success of their initial investments. The advantages of Wave Garden's patented technology are numerous. It's the most efficient and sustainable wave generator, only consuming between 0.3 and 1 kilowatt hour per wave, depending on the wave type. Comparative research reveals that this is approximately 10 times less than other equivalent wave generating systems, which can represent savings of $2 million to $3 million each year. With more than 90 surfers simultaneously in the water, our surfer capacity to lagoon size ratio is up to four times more than other surfing lagoons, while maintaining the optimum quality quantity, and variety of waves. This high lagoon capacity provides the opportunity to generate significantly more revenue than other similar sized lagoons, with a spillover effect on all other business units. In addition to having higher revenue potential and lower operational costs, our lagoons require less concrete and can have lower capital costs than lagoons providing a comparable surfing experience using pneumatic technology. We offer the most diverse wave menu with 20 plus different waves for beginners to pros. All Wave Garden facilities have a record of over 99% machine availability. We have 14 years experience in lagoon construction and developments are fast underway to create a carbon neutral surf park. We remain true to our mission to create world-class surfing and beach destinations, sharing our perfect waves with everyone to promote a healthy outdoor lifestyle while delivering a vast array of social and economic benefits. Great, I hope you, hope you enjoyed that. Do a bit of a summary of the company. Um, so as you said, we have nine parks that are up and running. I've included Edinburgh in this because the first waves were rolling out through the lagoon last night. I think Andy's here. And uh, can you imagine that you've spent 14 years making a surf park, getting to this point, and where is he when the first waves are rolling out? He's sitting here. So I think, I think we should congratulate him for coming here. Uh, uh, What's interesting to see is that we have a range of different facilities here of the nine that are up and running. The very first one on the left is actually in one acre. And we're delivering waves of four, 12 seconds long on all types of uh, uh, barrels, aerials, turn waves, etc. in such a small footprint. Our facility in Alai is two and a half acres. And then our, most of our very large facilities that we can get sort of 90, 90 surfers at the same time or a bit more are in the sort of five acre uh, size. In terms of what's coming next, what people I think are interested in, first project in the US is Atlantic Park in uh, Virginia Beach. That's opening, we hope, uh, by April, May of next year. It's one of our compact coves, so it's a lagoon of about two, 2.5 acres, but it's got 46 modules, so it's the same number of modules as Melbourne and Sydney, for example, so it'll deliver the same surfing experience. 
But what it doesn't have is those extra bays so that you can have beginners as well as the advanced surfers in the lagoon at the same time. But it'll have a capacity of up to 40 surfers per hour. And just to show that it's real, this is the current site or taken from a couple of months ago. John is here from Beach Street. They've been appointed as the operators. So we're really excited that they're getting involved in the first wave garden in, in the US. This is beyond the club in Sao Paulo. Some of you may be aware of Facenda de Grama, which was our first large residential-led development in Brazil. And the developer behind that, Oscar, a great guy, very experienced real estate developer. He's already under construction for a second project. Business model is highly different. It's an ex high-end, exclusive, private sports club. He's selling titles or memberships to that club for $150,000. He's sold the first 1,000, and the second 1,000 are to be sold at $200,000. He's delivering the largest wave, goon, uh, wave garden lagoon to date with 62 modules. It's going to be in that wave garden. And it's real. It's happening because there it is. It's under construction right now. It's going to be opening towards uh, the middle or end of next year. So that's going to be very exciting to see how that performs. Punta del Este in Uruguay. It's a sort of large-scale residential resort-style development. Uh, we're very excited to have our first project in Uruguay. And Fernando, the commercial director and one of the founders and owners of, of uh, Wave Garden, is spending a huge amount of time in South America. It's becoming a very significant market for us. And in fact, he sort of moved se semi-permanently to Uruguay for the last three or four months and is spending his whole time traveling around because we actually have about four or five projects now in Brazil. Uruguay is on its way, and we're looking at Chile and hopefully Argentina as well. And it's happening. OK, it's a little bit earlier, but site's clearance work has, has been going on, and we'll be getting ready with construction soon. This is interesting because this is going to be Wave Garden's first owned, developed, and operated facility of our own. This is in southern Spain, in Alicante. We're going to be doing some experiments with uh, innovations and trying out a few new things. Uh, what's fun about this is it's part of this larger sports campus where international athletes come and train in different sports aspects and spend time in the good weather in southern Spain. So we'll be up and running, we hope, in early 2026. This is the site where, as you can see, there's some challenges in terms of topography, but we've already started clearance uh, in terms of getting vegetation and tree lines out of the way, and some earth movements are going on as we speak. Desert Surf, uh, need I say more? This is uh, John's baby. I first met John in 2016, I think, in Florida when we had a first chat about a possible project. We're really excited about this project. Uh, we think it's, going to, it's a no-brainer in terms of the market and how successful we think it's going to be. And it's brilliant to see. I first visited the site maybe 2017, 2008, no, 2018, I think. It was 51 degrees Celsius on the day that I went to the site. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it was bloody hot. And here's the site. Yeah, under construction, a lot of earthwork going on, so we're really excited. That's going to be our first full-size, full-scale uh, wave garden in, in the US. Project that was announced by Craig yesterday, Bahrain, uh, one, a project I've been working on for some time. It's uh, going to be the first of ours in the Middle East uh, region but not the last, that's for sure. And we're, we're excited about that. And this is us when we went to visit the site. Since that photo was taken, about six meters of earth has been added to that platform because they wanted to raise the whole facility up above the groundwater for technical reasons, but also in terms of sort of visibility and creating a platform for residential around it. So very exciting, and that was officially announced uh, yesterday. Perth, uh, Nick is in the room as well uh, from, uh, from Aventure. This is the first of many projects we'll be doing with Aventure um, over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Really excited that it's got its, its permitting and we're at the final stages on terms of the financial raise and hoping to be starting uh, on site and doing some work before the end of this year. This is a photo of the site uh, and the group of sort of local community surfers that came for that image, which is very excited about that. Uh, Birmingham in the UK, this is going to be our third facility in the UK after the wave in Bristol, Edinburgh, and now Birmingham. Fully permitted, really good site, uh, has its funders on board, major funders. 
earthworks are starting. And in fact, the infrastructure is being put in place. That road that you see is completely brand new, built in the last sort of eight months to create and to give us access into the site uh, off the motorway network. Madrid, Spain. Um, this is going to be fun because it's with Atletico Madrid. I don't know if there are Real Madrid supporters here, but this is where we're working with Atletico Madrid. Instead, it's part of their new stadium campus. Uh, very exciting. It's obviously making very significant news in Spain, where the company's from, because it's the capital city, and we know that a wave garden is absolutely needed in the capital city in Madrid. And although the site clearance work hasn't started yet, there's been some significant TV coverage and everybody's getting very excited about the timetable and pushing hard on this. We've come up with some new, uh, new design ideas that are now being implemented at the last minute in the construction design for this project. So we're really looking forward and excited about that one. And this one of, oh, hold on, before I jump to that, because we're in the US, I'll just give you a quick update. I think we're, re we're well advanced on projects in Myrtle Beach, uh, Vancouver, Central Florida, and now a North Florida project, another project with Aventura was announced yesterday in Jacksonville, so we're excited about that. Other projects in the US that were really still at the earlier stages in terms of feasibility, and in some cases site search and so on, uh, Toronto, uh, Arkansas, um, uh, New England, and so on. So there's, a, you know, there's a, a number of projects out there. We do believe that there's capacity for several hundred surf parks around the world. And I know it's going, it's always goes slower than we want it to go, but it's certainly happening. And I think that as we get more projects opening in the US, we're gonna hit that tipping point where the financiers or investors are, are involved and they're gonna, they're gonna get behind this, uh, this sector for sure. One of our latest uh, Lagoon innovations, and this isn't just design, this is real. So for anyone that's been to a wave garden before, I know that we have what are called our lateral walls that typically run from the back up to around about here. And obviously the height of that wall drops down as you progress from here to here. And then so what we had blocking us, the views for development on this side, we would typically have to raise that development to give it views across and down onto the water because there might be a wall this high between you and the action of what's happening. We've now designed and implemented in our, and we'll show you some images, that basically only the first 30 meters of that wall is necessary to create the wave. And in fact, that's now a glass wall, so you can even see through that as well now. But the rest, you continue now the shore the whole way around. So we're delivering 350, almost 360 degree beachfront, if required in the development. And we're really excited. And it's not just a concept, but it's actually uh, real. Here's an image from our demo facility. Please ignore the old machine. That's obviously not what any of our current machines look like. But here you can see the glass wall comes along and then it drops back. And you've just got a beautiful shoreline and you have somebody surfing right next to where you are. And it has actually improved the waves very slightly and give us a few more options in how we're going to operate. And one of those options is this, and it's quite uh, interesting. At the moment, we get about three groups of eight on each side of our base. So 24, 24 beginners in addition to up to 20 and 20. So 40 plus 48 give us that. But there is a white water wave over here for beginners on this side that is not being used. And we currently don't use it in most of our facilities because it's not easy to get back out and into position uh, to catch that wave for beginners. But with the new design, basically, we can have a group of beginners, an additional eight people that can catch this wave and then just pick up their board and walk back out on the shore and back in again. <clears throat> this new innovation is not just nice in terms of aesthetic and real estate value, but it's actually delivering higher capacities at, within our lagoons already. And amazingly, lower capex, because building large lateral walls can be quite expensive, but building shores don't have deep piles, and actually on the project in Madrid, we saw an almost about 700,000 euro reduction in cost when we introduced the new Sideshore Lagoon uh, design. Just on my check my surf system, I have about two minutes left, I think, three minutes left. Uh, it's now been installed in Bristol and in Elia. What's great about it, it's the only video system that is actually linked to the wave-making machine, because that was the origin of this for us. It wasn't about 
we want to sell videos. It was, we want eyes for our machinery. So what we're moving towards, and we're seeing it, and we're going to see it very soon, is the artificial intelligence is going to learn how people are performing and surfing on each wave, and then potentially adapt the wave. So for, for example, you go into a session and you fall off on your first three waves. The next time that individual comes to catch a wave, the system will recognize it and give them an easier takeoff. That's where we're working towards. That's where we want to get to. So personalized ways for every single individual in, through computer learning. I'm going to finish up, and I'm just going to say one more thing. We do have some incredibly interesting new innovations when it comes to wave making that we're working on. It's far too early for us to announce it. But we had Bobby Martinez, Shane Dorian, and Kelly Slater at our facility last Wednesday, surfing for three hours and having absolute time of their life and catching these new ways and testing all of the new ways that we're now running. And we're, I'm really looking forward to when I can release that information and show you the videos because it's really exciting. So I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. I don't know if we have time for a question. Yeah. Any, any questions? Uh, with that new design, with that with shoreline, yeah. what's the water volume cost? Uh, so the water volume actually doesn't increase particularly much, but what we need is more land because we go from, we need about an extra 10 meters of width on that stage. I mean, we have different options to do it in slightly narrower, but it's basically more about additional land taking up slightly more width than it is impacting on the water volume. Does the redesign change the station properties inside the basin, like after a set has been, after a set has been created? No, actually, because the shoreline, it's, it's a continuation of our shoreline that dissipates the water currents, and actually it has improved that dissipation slightly in terms of the current and the fluid dynamics. So we're seeing just... It's something we go, why didn't we do this four years ago? You know, that type of thing. But because you have to continually learn and try different models, and we've now, it took us a year to build the new facility in our, so we had to knock down our old lagoon, reshape it and do all of this. So it's, you know, it's an ongoing process and we're gonna to continue to innovate, I'm sure. Are you gonna continue the model of uh, owning parks? Ah, only in our backyard. I think that's a good question. The reason we're doing it in, in Spain is because it's our backyard. It's going to be a showcase facility. We do have a surf operations team that at the moment go out to every one of our facilities and spend three or four weeks before you open training all the staff and then stay on site for a couple of months. But we're not into, we don't want to become an operator of surf parks at all. But by operating our own one in our own backyard, we'll learn more, we'll be able to share that knowledge with our, with our partners. Yeah. Will we be able to retrofit some of the existing lemons to add these new values? Oh, that's a really good question that I don't know the answer to. I, I don't see why not. It's just about the downtime of our, you know, they'll be losing income during that period when they're not operating and the time it takes to do it. But yes, it should be possible. Although if you've already invested to create the sidewalls. But yeah, it, it's possible, I imagine. It, uh, something I hadn't thought of. Good question. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it.